So how do you take ideas from idea stage into actual uh, momentum slash actuality? Okay, momentum. So I want you to be taking notes a little bit. One of the things I talk about Millionaire Mentor, I've got this millionaire. Oh, by the way, let me talk real quick to you guys watching live. You got till tomorrow at midnight. If you wanna to apply to be in my Millionaire Mentor test group where I'll personally mentor you for the next 12 weeks in a small group test group that I've created, you got till tomorrow. Tylopez.com slash apply. Okay, with that said, let's draw up here um, a brain with ideas, a brain. like a little light bulb. And I'm not sure how to draw this, but how do we show it as going from the mind to reality? Okay, I'll try. The mind to reality. I promise you, somebody here came up with an idea that somebody else did and became a millionaire while you were still bumbling over it in your head and making Excel spreadsheets to be sure and do the cost benefit analysis and the risk analysis and oh, here's my pros and cons and not. And there's nothing wrong with doing a little analysis, okay? There's nothing wrong with a little analysis, but paralysis by over analysis is a global epidemic, okay? So who here, let's just have a rea real talk. Who here? struggles with having good ideas but not knowing how to put them in practice so that they actually get started with them which one somebody said me 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 who has no problem with that okay it looks like about 80 percent of people are saying they have problems sometimes somebody said amber henry said i do zach ramirez says they're yes are so true, Zembron. Okay, so let's talk about this. One of the things that I learned from my five millionaire mentors, Joel Salatin, Alan Nation, Gary Townsend, Mike Murphy, John Dewar, Al Howe, I had more than five, I've had a lot more, but I had an initial core of millionaire mentors that taught me all the stuff they didn't teach me in school. I mean, that my parents didn't know how to teach me. The school system just failed us flat out, I promise you this. Um, sometimes people want to get real defensive of the modern school system and I'm like give me a break they don't even have one damn class between age 6 and age 18 teaching you how to structure your daily routine you don't think that's important you think learning pre-calculus is more important pre-calculus isosceles triangles social studies you think this is more important all you gotta basically do is teach people how to think creatively Teach them how to self-educate, and they'll be educating themselves long beyond school, as opposed to the modern school system with, statistically, the average person who graduates from school does not read a nonfiction book from start to finish for the next seven years. So what kind of school system is that? That's like saying we got a gym system that burns people out on lifting weights, and so once they stop working with their personal trainer, they never touch weights again. That means that trainer failed. A great trainer not only instills habits, instills, instills proper technique, but also instills the cultivation of motivation. That's my best attempt. <laughs> there we go. You know what, uh, The Rock? Who here likes The Rock? Who here is a fan of The Rock? Former wrestler and now movie star. I love The Rock. All right? Well, guess what, he says. As a young boy, five years old, his first memories of his father, who was also a big, strong guy, I think his dad was a wrestler too, was his dad in the gym. And he would hear the noise and boom, and he would hear heavy weights being lifted. And so sub subconsciously, almost subliminally, he was hard-coded to associate positivity with the gym. So guess what? Every day now, even in his 40s, he wakes up at four in the morning and works out between four and like six. I, I read he does like 45 minutes on the treadmill, then he does like 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, I'm sorry, he eats and then he lifts weights after it, something like that, some routine. And then he lifts weights later on too. The dude's active, the dude's ripped, the guy's making 50 million. I think he's the highest paid actor in the world right now or the making the most per year with movies. He's making a lot of money. He was in Fast and the last Fast and the Furious, all that. 
because he learned millionaire mentor routines. So why isn't the school system doing the same thing? How many people come out of the school system excited to be in shape, excited to read, excited about learning stuff? No. And some people are like, oh, Ty, why do you make a, why'd you make a Lamborghini video about the more you learn, the more you earn? Yeah, because I'm filling in the vacuum. I don't want to fill in the vacuum, but somebody had to say it. Some people are like, is that a scam? You think me fucking telling people to learn shit is a scam? What fucking dumb ass planet did you come from so you can return to it? That's all I got to ask you. Anybody who goes, oh, uh, Ty, you, you show pretty girls in Lamborghinis and Ferraris, and that's such a bad influence on young kids. What fucking low eye? Is there a planet called Planet Fucking Moron that your DNA somehow incorrectly evolved? And you came out like, Ugh. <laughs> okay. Young guys, kids getting excited about learning real shit from badasses like Warren Buffett, Elon Musk, is somehow gonna corrupt society because there's an attractive girl and a badass car, which is a work of art that human engineering designed like Lamborghinis and Ferraris, shit. The only reason you don't like a Lamborghini and Ferrari because you've never driven one, okay? All the virgins on here, just like most people are talking shit. Most people talk shit about hot girls are either virgins or sometimes women are threatened by it. When we all know women are threatened sometimes by other women's attraction, you know, attractiveness. So, uh-oh, Illuminati's coming for me. Uh-oh, my Illuminati brethren are mad that I talked about this <laughs> on social media. Do you want Mark for the Um, uh, what time is it now? 8.13. Have him come at nine. The boxer? Yeah. Okay. Just needed to know. Actually, do 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 Mark. Do Mark. Mark it now. Yeah. We'll do off box. 9.30, because you're going to take a while. No, but have him come early. Okay. Because that way, yeah. So, let's talk about this right here. For those of you born on planet Earth, evolved from human DNA, okay, you know, you have above 80 IQ. My dogs have like 60 IQ. You're above 80. Okay? Then watch this. Ideas to actuality. I don't know what is that. It's a, it's the like planet like bringing it to the world. Oh, okay, she's bringing it to the world. Like bringing okay. Bringing it to the world. All right. Here we go. Someone sure. said Kate has an IQ of 350. <laughs> okay. Let's go here. We go here to here. Pretty good. It's a thought bubble. Yeah, that's not it. <laughs> hey, it's better than I could have done. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give her that. Okay, first step. Here's the first step. Write at this out. She writes them in reverse so you guys can see it. Here's the first step. This is a mental step. Millionaire right. mindset. Okay. Excitement. Oh, or put this. This is gonna be long. I don't know if you can write this. Ability to generate excitement beforehand. Okay. Ability. Just put excitement beforehand. I'm already put ability. Okay. Ability, so I'm gonna ask people right now. Who is this? Brett. Brett, do you have the ability to generate excitement before something's happened? What do we have? Mehmed Nisi. Do you have that? Andre Dry again. Ali Abbasi. Uh, Kevin Pham. I'm just reading people off. On a one to 10, are you that person that only gets excited once it started or you're able to go, wait a second, what if Bill Gates at age 12 years old started getting excited about personal computers even though nobody in the world had them? They had big mainframe computers. They did not have personal computing. When, and this is like in the 1960s or early 70s. Steve Jobs was excited about personal computers even when the professors at Stanford and Berkeley the supposed experts told him that the global market demand for uh, personal computing was exactly one person that's how stupid these professors were they talk shit to Steve Jobs who now we all know Apple is the largest company in history those professors <laughs> had zero ability to generate excitement before it happened. Now, I guarantee you they all got on the bandwagon. 
I guarantee you, you guys have some friends right now that are bandwagoners. They ain't excited for you now. But the sec I've seen it with haters. When I first came out, oh, people were haters all times. This isn't real. Not. Now those people are like, yo, man, can I come to my house? Can I come to a party? I don't know. I had some, you know, I had five of the Golden State Warriors I had at my house Saturday. Uh, and James Harden came by at a pool party with Matt Barnes. People texted me out of the blue. Oh, yo, man, I was seeing your Snapchat. Can I come over? To, can I swing by the crib? I'm like, shit, bandwagoner. Where were you before? Where were you before? Bandwagoners. World full of bandwagoners. You got family members that are bandwagoners. You got family members right now that are bandwagoners. <laughs> Mark my words. You got that person who don't really support you. Once you make a million dollars, they're going to, once you make a hundred grand, once you get that idea patented and trademarked, they're going to be like, oh, you, you know, I was, I, I was just kind of, I always really saw it in you. No, you didn't. And see shit in me. You were the enemy. And now you're trying to come over. And people want to come over like little spies, change their uniforms. You can't change your uniform in war. That's against Geneva Convention. You get shot. You wear the enemy's uh, uniform, and then you switch back over. That's. So, generating that is more important than overcoming procrastination. Because you can't generate you can't generate activity directly to fight procrastination. Procrastination is actually built into the human DNA. Procrastination is basically your brain doing a glucose budget. It's budgeting glucose, your brain, your blood brain barrier. We have a blood brain barrier. That's what keeps things from poisoning your brain. So if you eat the wrong, most things don't pass the blood brain barrier. Uh, cocaine does. That's why cocaine is a hell of a drug. That's why you better be careful with cocaine because anything that passes your blood brain barrier can mess up your brain permanently so what happens is glucose sugar that you take in there's different sugar forms right there's fructose there's glucose those things your brain has to conserve it because you have only a limited amount of glucose so procrastination is rooted in the scientifically understood phenomenon of brain budgeting so to overcome the brain budget you have to make your brain feel comfortable with something that appears to be hard. Okay? So I, one of my best things, I have a lot of flaws and I have a few strengths. One of my best traits that I wouldn't trade for anything. There's some things I would change about myself, my, my mindset, but not this one. I love, I have, I can get excited very quickly and I can see the potential. I've started many, many businesses, helped many people launch huge businesses. I mean, I've done it over and over and over and over and over since I was 19 years old. Okay? That's one of my strengths. If you don't have that, na I, maybe it came natural, I'm not sure. My mom was kind of a hippie and a dreamer. I think I picked up that trait from her. It was a positive trait of just being like, my mom's unconventional. She was talking about organic food before I was born, before anybody ever heard the word organic food. She was reading crazy literature you know like in the 1960s and 70s and so what happened that unconventionality passed on to me okay okay next thing so if you want to go from just having ideas and actually be an executor you got to ask yourself what's your idea right now and do you visibly or physically feel a change in your body where you're getting hyped you ever watched a great basketball player, a great soccer player, Ronaldo, Messi, you ever watch LeBron James, Michael Jordan, what do they do in the locker room? They hype themselves up. Do you see them in there with the whole team before the game? Just going like, well, we probably won't be able to win the game. Eh, that's how most people are. Most entrepreneurs, oh, well, it's going to be hard. This one will be hard. I have it. No, you get hyped. So you got to be able to hype yourself up. Okay? All right. Second thing. The second thing. That's tricky how you're doing that. Okay. <laughs> Ability to generate excitement. The second thing. Oh, I did my one backwards. Sorry. Ability to create what's called, I'll just call it an MVP. Or right, let's just call it prototype. Ability to create a prototype. Now, the problem with some of you. And I promise you, this is why some of you are gonna go broke with your first idea. 
because you never prototype anything. You always try to launch the full thing. You're like the dude who meets his first pretty girl and it proposes to her on the first date. You don't do that. You got to test the damn relationship before you jump full head and heels into it, right? No, not with business. I, there was a guy over in my house last year, this older guy, retired, took his entire life savings, invested it in building some stupid app. It was one of those damn dumb apps, like I told you. Drone is a Uber for drone delivery dating service. I don't know what it was. Okay, I'm going to deliver hookers to your house, drop them off in drones. I don't know. He had invested $1 million, his entire life savings, and he never even tested if anybody would buy it. The second I heard the idea, I said, this dude, guarantee, lost all his money. And sure enough, I never heard from him again. So, ability to create a prototype. What's the definition of a prototype? A small version of the big version. Everything that you have is a big idea. You have to create a prototype. Before you build the Empire State Building, before you build a massive skyscraper, they make a little model of it that the architects look at to make sure they didn't do it wrong. Oh no, not most people in this world. They're gonna take their life. Say the guy the other day, I, one of the guys that's in my Millionaire Mentor Coaching Program, I'm personally mentoring him for 12 weeks. He's on our first call, which those of you who are not in it, you already missed. It was Tuesday, three day, two days ago. He said to me he was going to start a coffee shop that would have cost $100,000 to sign the lease, get the inspected kitchen because he was going to sell some food, all this. And I said, no, sell it out of your house. Make sure there's a market for it. See if you can get 50 people out of your kitchen. You might need to get an inspected kitchen, but that's under 10 grand, especially for coffee. Coffee's not a highly, uh, you know, there's not a high likelihood people are gonna get food poisoning from coffee versus egg sandwiches or something. So that guy, you know, talked to me after. He's like, dude, you saved me 100 grand. Nobody gave me that advice. Do you have the ability to take your big idea that you're excited for and shrink it down to a teeny little working model? Teeny one. Why are you wearing sunglasses at night? I don't know. Why do you care? Better question. Okay, so um, that's the second thing. Prototype. Third question. I mean, third item. To take things from just an idea in your head. Remember, step one overcomes the procrastination. You generate and enough excitement, ambition follows. Step number two, ability to create a prototype, that saves you from bankruptcy. That saves you from bankruptcy. Step number three, and this is all important one, this is all important one, pre-sell the idea. Can you write that down? Mm -hmm. Pre-sell the idea. Someone said, because <laughs> Ty is high. No, I'm not high. I don't smoke weed really. It doesn't, you got to test weed on your own body, you know, like Snoop Dogg does well with it. It doesn't help me much. Ty, you're amazing with these words. You've done Shakespeare proud. <laughs> uh, I'm no Shakespeare. Shakespeare was amazing. But uh, thank you for the compliment. Okay, so step number three. Uh, how did I tell you to write it? Um... We're gonna test Kate's IQ. Come no, on, Kate. I just asked you, I was like, wait, what'd you say? And then Kate! <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by all these comments. I'm just <laughs> What did I say? Who remembers? There you go. Pre-sale. Pre-sell. Now, if you've heard of a website called Kickstarter, if you heard of a website called Indiegogo, what they allow you to do, and you don't have to use those websites, but for example, before people even launch ideas now, they try to pre-sell it. That means customers pre-order it. Perfect example, LeVar Ball, the Ball Brothers, BBB brand, Big Ball, isn't it Big, Big Ball, Ball Brother? Brand. Big Baller brand. It's just BB, right? Yeah, BBB. BBB, Big Baller brand, okay? LeVar, um, 
you know, Los Angeles Lakers now, UCLA, these kids. This one guy, if you don't know who he are, is from America, one father. He's got basically three badass basketball sons. Yeah. Two, what? And Two and a half. Some people think one of the sons won't be <laughs> as good. But one of them just got drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers as the number two pick. And they decided instead of signing with Nike, they decided that they're going to make their own shoe brand. Big baller brand. And what they do, you can go buy their shoes for four hundred and ninety, wasn't it ninety nine or ninety seven dollars? It's a, it's over four hundred bucks, under five hundred bucks, okay? But you don't get the shoes till November. What is that called? What's that word, Kate? Pre-sale. Pre-sale. Why are you guys not pre-selling? Somebody said that called a ripoff. It's not a ripoff. If you tell people who wants to be first in line, the shoes come out in November, you can buy them now. How's that a ripoff? What do you mean, dumb idea? The, 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 the VAR ball, the ball guy ain't dumb. It's 495 to 695. 495 to 695. And he came out with some new ones. It's it literally doesn't come out till November. He's not dumb. He's following the formula. He understands. This is the damn Illuminati. You want to know? What the, I'm I'm gonna call my millionaire mentor thing Illuminati. It's a real Illuminati. Now somebody said Ty sold less than ten thousand units. Okay, what's ten thousand times five hundred bucks? Or what's ten thousand times five hundred bucks? Who knows? Remember, I always know how to do math. Is it 500,000? No. 5 million. Okay. Did you make 5 million bucks this year? Selling shoes that don't exist yet? <laughs> don't be laughing. Show me your numbers. People lie. People tell me they're smart. Show me your numbers. 5 million is a hell of a lot smart. He sold $5 million worth of shoes that don't exist yet. How are you going to call that a dumb man? Dumb like a fox. <laughs> He's smarter than you. I guarantee you he's smarter than you. Whoever said that comment. Guarantee you. Now, whether it'll be better, more viable than him signing a larger contract with Nike. But you know what? The press, even if the damn shoot thing doesn't work, if the Sun does well at the Lakers, they're going to come back around. Adidas, Nike, Puma, uh, Under Armour. Uh, not Puma, but Adidas. Under Armour or uh, Nike gonna come back around, sign him. He sold five million dollars there. They put out some shoes. Some people, you always got a story to tell, okay? So please, pre-sell, pre-sell. If nobody buys, yeah, and it's sorry, five hundred dollars times how many shoes? Ten thousand. The guy said. Yeah, he said ten thousand. Oh yeah. Why did somebody say no? I don't know if that's right. But that's what he said. Wait, yeah. yeah if you sold right. ten thousand, this guy said no. That's well, I don't know that's correct math. I don't know if he sold ten thousand. Yeah, but if you sold ten thousand for five hundred bucks, yeah, it's five million. Somebody said two point five Sounds million. Like a lot of shoes. Somebody's dumb. Somebody said, "Dang, hanging on Puma." No, I'm not hanging on Puma. <laughs> Just ain't nobody wearing Pumas in it. And <laughs> Brianna wears Puma. Puma. Okay. Okay. How can you pre-sell water bottles? Is everything can be pre-sold. Go to Kickstarter, go to Indiegogo, and start learning. Some of you are not learning enough. Okay? Now, let's go back to the apply page. By the way, because I'm going to leave here soon. I'm going to continue to give you some more good, powerful stuff. You want to do three? No, no, we're going to do two. I'm going to do two hours. How, how long have we been on? How long have we been on? 93 minutes. So, hour and a half. So. Okay. So I'm gonna be here for about another 20, 30 minutes, uh, talking about execution. Oh wait, the fly. First, yeah, the fly page, the first page. I just want to say this: I don't want to hard sell anybody I'll because right way, whether you go in or don't go in doesn't matter to me, Twitter but it can help you. Tylopez.com/apply. You have less than 20, uh, 48 hours, less than two days to get in my test group. Here's the deal: if you get in the test group, this is what I'm gonna do for you. I'm going to personally mentor you for the next 12 weeks. My goal is to completely change your life, specifically around finances, okay? So we're not going to be talking about, you know, 
where I'm not gonna be psychoanalyzing your your rough childhood or some shit like that. We're talking about it's millionaire mentor program. It's a test group. <laughs> and so I said I like a seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, you try to write backwards. And no, so I the right way because they're complete. I've already started, so you're already late. You missed the first every Tuesday. I do a live call at 4 p.m. Uh, California time. 4 p.m. It's only. For people, you get a special link if you're in the test group. It's private. You have to log in with a password. We have good technology. If people are selling the passwords, it'll lock them all out and all that stuff. So you get in. 12 weeks, I'm going to take you step by step each week. I'm going to teach you something every Tuesday live. You can ask me questions. And then I'm going to give you an assignment Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday to try to rewire your brain for success. Okay? I let the first the, the test group started last Friday. The people who got in already went to the first Tuesday. So let me I want to just congratulate people that are getting in now. Tylopez.com slash apply. Everything's there. When you go to Tylopez.com slash apply, how much it costs, what you get, who can be in it, who can't be in it. This is not a pre-sale, by the way. It's not a pre-sale. Because it's already launched, so people are already in the program. I have done pre-sales before, but this isn't one of them. Okay, let me pull up. This is real-time report I get every time somebody gets into a test group. Here we go. On dear Andre Olnick. You can read that off. David Paris. Here's actually a picture of him. What's up, David? People no. sometimes send in their picture. He lives in California. All right, let's keep going. It's only 190. All right, Robbie Cora Rubia. Uh, Nevada. Oh, first time. All right. Yet, oh uh, no, that, oh, that's a tough name. Can you say that? Mm. Ikachu oh. Maguabu. Oh, he has a picture. There we go. Congratulations, welcome to the program. Matthew Watson. People send in their pictures a lot. Oh, I can't see. Congratulations. No, it's public. The people in. Zana Ali. No picture. Today we're getting more people from California. Dunk. Okay. Somebody's name is just Dunk. I'm assuming that's Duncan. Congratulations. Lives in Florida. No, that's for a book. That's something else. Nathan Reinhardt, Arizona. Congratulations. All right. Just name it off. I like to congratulate people who take action. Most people ain't action takers. Most people, you can't fix stupid. Never forget that. So some people in your life, you're trying to fix something that is unfixable. Okay? All right. Let's draw. I want to take a few question and answers on this subject. I just gave you... Let's go back to where we were. Tylopez.com slash apply. You got less than 48 hours to get in, and it'll, then it'll be closed. You'll go to the page. It will no longer work, okay? It'll just, you can put your email in, but it won't let you get in the test group, okay? Let's go back to the page we're, last page we're on. Hey, bro, it's nighttime. Yeah, take your sunnies off. Nah, man, I got this bright-ass light in my eyes. So... Thank you for updating me that it was nighttime because for some reason I, I thought it was daytime until you helped me. You know, I struggle sometimes with understanding night versus day. Okay, question and answers. Ty's thoughts on drop shipping. Great business if you're willing to experiment enough to find the products that work. Two people that I trained in business in the last year. Um, Samir and Jesus, they were on my Snapchat. They're 21 and 22. It took them uh, eight months of experimenting, but now they're making over 200 grand a month. Okay? So gross. They're probably netting 50 grand a month. Ty, renting a house versus renting a con condo. Um, in general, houses always beat condos. Always. Especially for investment. You want to lose money, invest in a condo in an area that can be overbuilt. That's what happened to people in Vegas. That's what happened in Miami. People are jumping off buildings. 
houses are harder to replicate and in general things that are hard to replicate hold value longer so almost always a single family home will beat a condo there's a, there are times when that's not so there's exceptions to the rule in certain place um you know like manhattan where they don't really have many homes they got brownstones they got condos but for the most part condos are a little trickier and i've invested in condos i've invested in houses you know it's there's money to be made but i like homes better and most smart investors will tell you that apartment complexes are good because then you have multiple units duplexes are better than even single homes and stuff okay question um thoughts on frozen food you know fro i think that's a great business i think food is a massive business i'll tell you which one i think is a great one let's let's do a new page i'll give you some ideas i'm gonna give you guys some ideas just here for free my millionaire mentor mentors were all every day i was getting a new idea from joel salatin from these people so i'll just do that same thing for you one of the things is snack healthy snack foods can you write that out this is going to be a massive business. I'm talking beef jerky, turkey jerky, um, better tasting bars like Quest bars, uh, vegan type stuff, because well, there's a certain set. You know a big market? I read a fascinating article yesterday in Fortune. Things for diabetics. Diabetics have to buy very specific food and not that many people are competing for them, but it's something like a $22 billion market I think I'm remembering that correctly 22 billion dollar world to play in that's a niche market but it's big diabetic snacks why isn't anybody doing that I tell you why because they're trying to make the next uber app and this and that and I'm like come on people do you have to make everything so hard for yourself okay number two we got healthy snacks Oh, you're writing it both ways? <laughs> yeah, because it's backwards on this one and a different one. All right, so healthy snack foods <laughs> is a great idea. Number two, okay, and I'll do one that's not food. Um, helping older people with technology. Now, that can be done in multiple ways. That can be done with consulting. That's why I've been teaching over 25,000 people how to get businesses to pay them one to ten grand to do their social media because old people don't know how to do technology they own restaurants they own dentist offices they're over 50 years old over 60 they're never gonna learn Facebook YouTube Instagram email opt-ins they're never gonna do it so it's a huge market huge market in my opinion of helping helping older people with technology it can be web services design services it can be installing security systems in their house it can be anything that's too hard even geek squad best buy has a whole company called geek squad it's you know a huge business because people buy laptops from best buy then they don't know how to turn them on you can't imagine how my 99 year old grandma she she can buy a laptop and not know how to turn it on so there's money in the convenience of, and that's a great service business. Okay, put a number one and then a number two. I'm just gonna give you a handful of ideas here. But as I told you, sometimes it ain't the idea, that's the problem. The problem is people too lazy, too frozen. You can't always be frozen in time. People get, yeah, prepped meals for diabetics. Amazing business prep meals for diabetics people don't want to cook natural soap somebody said yeah that's okay business it, it's somewhat saturated it's a little trickier to start it, it can be, I don't like to discourage ideas because sometimes I miss them so it, it's not one that's my number one but if you really into soap I could see it working you just there how it's a little bit tricky I'm trying to give you good starter businesses so if you're already making a million bucks a year you know, you probably don't want to start a business, even a service business. If you're already not to make a million, a million bucks a year is great. Up to a million bucks a year you can do from service business. Ty, you look like you're sad. <laughs> I'm not a sad person. Uh, but uh, I think it's the sunglasses. And maybe that I'm drinking tea. <laughs> if you guys can read it. Gardening service business, that can be okay. That's, again, a saturated market. The thing I like about this the global t helping older people with technology, older business owners manage their Twitter, their Instagram. Not many people are doing it yet. 
and there's a huge market because in the United States alone there's over 20 million uh, small businesses, small to medium sized businesses, and globally there's over 50 million. So you got a huge total addressable market, you know what I'm saying? So, whereas if you just, it, there's ways to do it right and ways to do it wrong. Okay. Sneaker cleaning business, yes, but not how many, okay, let's talk about something real quick. Here's a good point. How to recognize a good idea versus a bad idea. Here's a, in general, if you ask your 10 friends if they've ever paid for that and they all say no, then it's not a great idea, in my opinion. So for example, sneaker cleaning business, where you go around and clean people's sneakers. Okay, if you ask your 10 closest friends and acquaintances, how much money did you spend this year on dudes who came to your house and cleaned your sneakers? You're gonna get a big fat zero, okay? You can get a big fat zero. So if you ask people how much money did you spend on people making you food, it the average person eats out five times a week. People are now spending more money on food preparation by restaurants, Uber Eats and all that stuff, snack bars and all that, then they're literally cooking their own. But now it's it's jumped the, the statistics. So I, I'm careful with stuff that that's why I like mustard. If you ask your friends, your tangles as friends, did anybody buy food that had mustard in it? You're gonna get half half your friends. Oops, Instagram stopped reconnecting. So, um, tire for a car. Everyone needs tires. Yeah, but what's your? That's a tricky business to get into because tires. You have to make the first tire is expensive. So. Yeah. Tom, a professional MMA fighter. What about an MMA fitness gym business? Yes. You you got UFC gyms. You got fight gyms. Um, I, you really want to go in with the mentality of scalability, replication of what you're doing. If you're going to go in and make one, one business, one location, you're probably going to struggle. I got to reset Instagram. What happened to Instagram? Selling plants online. Yeah, I mean, you know, the flower.com guys made so much money. So much money. So, yes. Can you make money modeling as a male? Mm, probably not. I'll be honest with you. My One of my best friends is one of the highest paid male models in the world. It's a tough ass business. He's with Ford. Um, but you might be able to. That's a tricky one, boy. Most people think they're better looking than they are. And when it comes to, it's not just being better looking, you also have to be uh, photogenic. You also have to write, write connections. Okay. Let's see if our Instagram comes back on. Um, okay. Self-publishing a book, yes or no. That one's tricky. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna create a book and three people are gonna read it. So you gotta know how to market. I'm gonna go make this. Kate should move forward and you should step back. <laughs> what do people like? Money or beauty? <laughs> hey. What? I can make money. No, I'm not a saint, but people associate me more with money <laughs> and you more with beauty. You have beauty? Someone said I have a hunt. Let me reset Instagram. Why does it say no internet connection? We're struck Instagram is being annoying. Are you guys having any? Huh? Reset the app. Just uh, cancel it out. And yeah, can up. you do it real quick? Yes, All right, I got it. I can do it actually. Let's see. You think that'll do it? Um, one try. It's still saying no. What, what's the other um, internet we got here? The guest one? Sam? Yeah, we got Rexford Private and Rexford. Yeah, we should switch to the private, the, um, yes. yeah, let's see, boom, Wi-Fi on, here, take this phone, see if you can connect it to the other one, <laughs> I don't know why it's on this Instagram, 
Why is my head smaller? I love funny videos. Some of you should make, those Instagrams where you put a lot of funny videos make, get crazy engagement. All right, here we go. I'm going on the Rex for a private. Let's see if that's better. Check in connection. Do we have, what's the other, this KS internet? Oh, there we go. What's up, Instagram? We're back. Let's actually do, we gotta do a giveaway. Who wants this Apple Watch? Can you check and make sure I didn't mess it up? You, what? don't do it that way. That's not a good way to do it. Okay, who wants this? Who wants an Apple Watch? Okay, hold this up. I'm gonna give away an Apple Watch. Here's what I'm gonna do. How big is your video crew? How many people we got here? Three, three plus me and Kate. Oh, and, and Armin, we have four plus two. Okay, let's do this. Apple Watch, I'm gonna ask you guys a question. Who, first person to answer this wins is Apple Watch. It's business trivia question, but everybody, it's not too hard of a question. Okay, <laughs> it says pause. Man, Instagram, Instagram's tearing the fuck up. Okay, here's the question. Who's the only man alive to have started three companies simultaneously worth a billion dollars. The only man alive for this Apple Watch. Let's see. There. Rashad. Oh, fucker. I lost you. All right. This is the first one I got here, this person. This wasn't necessarily the first person, it was the first person I could capture. So if I didn't capture you, sorry. But this person, D Massey underscore 24, Elon Musk. Congrats. Oh, that guy said. I know. Well, if you look, if anybody cries about this, don't cry. It's got to be, I know you might have said it first, but I didn't see it. There's four phones here. I don't have four eyes. I guess I do have four <laughs> eyes. I got these two. <laughs> Whoa, that's bright. You need sunglasses too. <laughs> All right. I'll be doing, I'll do one more giveaway before we end here. How much time we got left? Until two hours. Let's talk about something important. I want to talk about Google Trends for a second. If you're not checking Google Trends, you're missing out. It's a free part of Google where they basically tell you what's the most trending topics in the world. Why do you want to check Google Trends? Easy. To be ahead of the curve is the one of the ingredients to making money. Like period if you are some people are coming up with ideas that were done 30 years ago and they can't figure out why they're broke okay you know the interesting thing what subject do you think is always almost always the most googled thing in the United States what subject guess mm. Kate what do you think just pick anything I don't know pick something <laughs> I don't know. I'm shy. Kate's not that shy. Somebody <laughs> said John D. Rockefeller. Yes, that is the most Googled thing on average. Porn. No, I, they actually don't track porn. Sports. Porn probably is. Sports. Chris Paul. Well, he was one. So, PGA Championship and Green Bay Packers. What do you think is one of the number two most, thi uh, most Googled things in the world? This will help your marketing too, understanding trends. Awesome. Taylor Swift's in number two. So basically, this is how the world, this is how the United States thinks. Number four is Kylie Jenner because it's her birthday. Number five is the Chicago Bear. So number one is PGA golf. Number two is Taylor Swift. Number three is football, Green Bay Packers. Number four is Kylie Jenner's birthday. Number five is Chicago Bears. Number six is PGA golf again. Number seven is Zach Randolph, NBA basketball. Uh, Number eight is music. Joe Budden is expecting a child with models, Sin Santana. Number nine is Patriots. Number 10 is Minnesota Vikings. So the first 10 things are only what? Entertainment. Now here's my message to you, okay? Here's my message to you. You gotta learn from that. You gotta learn from it. What I learn is that if you want to be good at marketing, you have to have an ed you have to have an entertainment element. 
A lot of people are like, hey, Ty, aren't you a businessman? How come you have other stuff in? How come you have you, you know, partying at your house? How come you have, you know, going and play by match? Or pre- because entertainment is important. Why do you think that entertainment, there's a little question here, who can understand the science? Why are humans more enthralled by entertainment than serious subjects that can actually help their life? Who knows why? Scientifically, not just an opinion, you know? Who knows? To get their mind off their own troubles. Okay, that's a somewhat good answer. Because someone says it's inherent entertainment. That's a bad answer. I said, why do people like entertainment? And he said, because it's entertainment. This is not a planet Earth answer. Okay. Because they have nothing to do. Because people are unaware. Distractions. Dopamine. Okay. I like the dopamine answer. Somebody said endorphins. Uh, endorphins. Dopamine. Here's the thing with dopamine. There's a part of your brain that releases feel good hormones there's different ones there's um, a big one or one of the bigger ones is dopamine you also have things like cortisol? You know, no cortisol is negative cortisol is a stress hormone but that is a good point so most people because of the way their brain was wired is when you talk to them about something serious they release cortisol remember I was saying come, come back here a little bit and you can be seen there. Yeah, in on um, the Rock, when he thinks about the gym, his brain releases feel-good hormones because as a young child, his father he associates you know lifting weights with being with his dad, who I think is now dead. So he wants you know it's like a good memory. So he's able to continually work out and stay in great shape because he has positive connotations to the gym. So what happens is as I told you is that the school system turned everybody's brain away from education, from learning, from being knowledgeable, most people, not the people that are the wealthiest, but the masses. So they associate that with cortisol and they associate sports, they associate Kylie Jenner, they associate Taylor Swift and music. Music's the biggest drug dealer business in the world. Music releases drugs in your brain. They're just legal drugs, biggest legal drug business in the world is not the conversation about marijuana is music why do you think people love music it makes people feel good it's a drug like alcohol it's a chemical physical uh reaction that your body has so for those of you trying to who got a good idea and trying to do all this stuff you have to have the ability to entertain people because in the modern world people aren't going to just want to hear you know straight up telling them stuff they want to hear too. Ty, my girlfriend is a sixth grade teacher and hates when I bash the school system. Well, there's a lot of good teachers stuck in a bad system. School system hasn't changed much. Literally, think of this. If you went to a classroom in the 1800s, it would almost be the same. Actually, let's draw this. This is an interesting thing. New page. I'm going to draw it put a split down the screen. I'm going to draw what schools look like in the 1800s. Let's see what's similar and what's changed. Now, have hospital changed since the 1800s? Uh, yes. In the 1800s, they didn't know you should wash your hands. They didn't have sinks and they didn't have soap. So put 1800s on that side. But let's talk about education system. 1800s and then modern times 2017 somebody said woman wife are you just learning English I think some people are practicing their English they ain't from America so they're like what are two words that I know woman wife (laughs) Uh, 1800s what did you do Basically, school was 6 to 18, roughly. Even though Abraham Lincoln, a lot of people would would, uh, would drop out. But let's just say it was the same age range, about 6 to 18. Okay? It was taxpayer-funded, depending on what country you're in, but let's just talk about the U.S. I forget what year they introduced taxpayer, you know, taxpayers. 
or public school. Can you look that up? What year did public school tax, you know, public schools come into effect? Ty, I think you are smart, but not as smart as you think you are. That might be true. There's a lot of stuff I don't know. But I do know how to make you watch me. <laughs> okay, taxpayer funded. 1821 in Boston. In 1821, Boston started taxpayer, uh, you know, funded public school. All right, so you have that. Now, what did you do? Like I said, age six to 18, you had core curriculum. What was the core curriculum in the 1800s? It was reading, writing, and arithmetic, right? Reading, writing, and arithmetic. Same. Now, notice everything that we're saying here is exactly the same in the modern world. Someone says, this T has Ty randomly talking. <laughs> Hey, tea is a good business. I got a friend made a $100 million company with tea. From, and he owns it all himself with no investors. Not bad, right? Damn it, I messed up. That's okay. <laughs> what does that say? Uh, Taxpayer funded. Okay, then the next one is reading, writing, and arithmetic. That hasn't changed. Okay. But the world's changed. The world's changed beyond belief. The world's unrecognizable. 1821, when public schools started in Boston, what'd the world look like? Well, 1821, Germany wasn't a country. Italy wasn't a country. Uh, the United States didn't have all the states. There was no Hawaii. There was no Alaska. There was no California. Uh, black people were all slaves. Or in the South were not all, but slavery was full force. Uh, women couldn't vote at all. The U.S. Constitution considered black people and women not full humans. That's what the 1800s was. Let's just be real. Uh, yeah, so the Civil War hadn't been fought. The South was basically separate from the North. What else was different in the 1800s? They didn't know about germ theory. There was no penicillin. No penicillin. So if you got pneumonia, you were going to die. And basically what it come down to. You were gonna die. Pneumonia, death. Doctors would go from uh, working with dead corpses, not wash their hands, walk over and deliver babies. There was no sewage system in almost every city. So basically, people would dump their pee out of the window into the street. So the whole world stunk bad. Okay? It stunk. There was not much spices for your food, so food sucked, believe it or not. Yeah, there was a lot of bad. Now, but the education system had the same stuff, same age range, same this, reading arithmetic, lectures. Put, right. put here, put um, non-interactive learning, or just put lecture. So non-interactive learning where a teacher would just say, do this and that. Now, if we go to the year 2017, what's different? Well, we got nuclear power. The, the current nuclear bombs that the US has pointed at North Korea, one bomb is 150,000 tons of TNT. That's how big the bombs are now. It's 10 times bigger than the bomb in World War II that killed 165,000 people. So now we got bombs that'll easily wipe out. Los Angeles can be wiped out, literally, one press of a button. Okay, that's different, right? Nuclear age. We can go to Mars, okay? We have cars. We have modern, we have uh, transplants where if you lose your face, they'll put a new face on you, like if a dog attacks you. We have female billionaires. We have black president, Obama, last term. We have global GDP at an all time high for you. More wealth than ever. We have social media. Somebody said we have thoughts. <laughs> for those of you who don't know what a thought is, it means like uh, slutty women. That's what he's trying to say. Not thoughts like in your brain. T-H-O-T-S. It means that hoe over there. Okay? 
So we got that, but the school system hasn't changed at all. So for the person who said, Ty, my first grade, my, my girlfriend is a sixth grade teacher and she doesn't like when I say there's something wrong with the system. You gotta tell her, there's nothing wrong with you as a person, but come on, you ain't gonna change anything. Now, some people argue, no, school is so much better now. Okay, explain what's so much better about the modern school system. Um, they're like, well, some schools have iPads. Ooh, oh, that's gonna change it. <laughs> oh, oh, you got, uh, you're right, yeah, iPads. Um, you have, uh, let's see, they don't have gym anymore, so people getting fatter and fatter. I saw a, a, a video yesterday of a guy in the Middle East who bought a BMW i8, the electric car, and he couldn't get out of it. He was too fat. He was literally stuck in his own seat. Okay, so we got fatter people, fatter kids. We now have, I read that um, something like 5% of kids under five are obese. Okay, so we got fatter kids. Um, yes, what else? So what else is so good in the system, modern system? We probably have better teachers, I agree. We have testing systems, so to get funding, you just have teachers that focus on tests. Because we all know in life, we all know in life, what makes great people are tests. And we all know in life that the valedictorian of the high school is always the most successful people, right? Now, no, we, we haven't learned that. Academics are relatively uncorrelated with inventors, Academy Award, uh, Academy Award directors and producers, Nobel Prize winners. There's some correlation, but probably most of the correlation has to do with the fact that they come from more stable families, not because of the school system. So what is the great thing about it? I mean, can someone update me? Well, we have universities, but they had universities in the 1800s. So, I'm not picking on anybody, but on the other side, I'm not gonna lie. What do you want me to do? Make believe just because your girlfriend's a school teacher that everything's awesome? Jane, my girlfriend. So I'll, I'll tell you the truth. Tests, most of these tests are retarded. SAT tests, I always say I got these PhDs who worked, one of my first businesses, I had all these PhDs working for me. I said, do you guys know you got the you got the PhD, you spent 12 years in school, and I got the, I'm got i a college dropout, but you work for me, I don't work for you. Now, as I said, there's more innovation in the world, but that's partly because there's more people in the world. It's not apples to apples. You have seven billion people now, so if one millionth of one percent are highly intelligent people, then the reason we have more innovation now is partly just because of population growth. There's more likelihood to have an Einstein in a world that's seven billion people versus a world back, there wasn't even a billion people on the planet in the 1800s. I think we passed a billion people around the year 1900, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know. And I'm just gonna tell you this, if you don't take matters into your own hands and decide enough is enough, today is the day, you begin to re-educate and rewire the mind. Not by using the modern media system. People say, why do you like books? Well, because if you just get all your stuff from the news, you're getting it from reporters, and we all know reporters, half of them are biased. Half of reporters are good. It's the same thing I told you guys yesterday. 50% of reporters suck, they're bad people. The other 25% are good people, but they do, you know, they're lazy, they don't really look, and then 25% of the media are badass, awesome people that you can learn from. But the problem is it's such a convoluted place that you can't differentiate. So I kind of don't learn anything from the media. What I decide to do is go out, find people with proven track records. If I want to learn, like I'm working on a t-shirt business. I've had it for a while, but I want to grow it now. I went out and I found this guy um, who's like 30 years old and he was making 1.5 million dollars a month in t-shirts so i go i'm gonna self-educate my brain there i didn't go to community college for that there's no community college class on that i mean you can go to fit them here but <laughs> i can learn that in one month what what people are spending four years of school going to so someone said they learned from trevor noah the late night talk host. well you know trevor noah's good he's funny he's super liberal 
I never like to learn from extreme people. Anybody who only hates Donald Trump or only loves Donald Trump, both of them are idiots. Just trust me. If you're out there and you have and you think Donald Trump, you have only hate or only love, you're an idiot. Do you think Donald Trump is a perfect person or an absolute idiot? I mean, give me a break. He's smart enough to become president, and he's probably full of flaws like every damn politician in the last 500 years. Name a great politician. Name any of them. Calvin Coolidge in the early 1900s was taking bribes in the White House. Straight up bribes. Caught. <laughs> that was one president. You know, maybe Abraham Lincoln. But Abraham Lincoln wasn't perfect. You know, Abraham Lincoln didn't necessarily want to abolish slavery. He just didn't want the South to expand. It wasn't until much later that he did the Emancipation Proclamation. So he ain't as much a saint as people want to say. JFK ain't as much a saint as people want to say. Obama got his dark side. He did. He had some policies which were idiotic. Let's all be real here. Hillary Clinton ain't all bad and not all good. So those of you that have extreme ide ideologies and extreme opinions, you're always wrong. So what I do is... I learn from everybody, but I pick and choose what I learn. So I'm like, you know what I'm going to learn from Donald Trump? Guerrilla marketing. He took his own money. He didn't raise that much money. He's a master marketing, master of virality. You know what I'm going to learn from Hillary Clinton? I mean, Hillary Clinton was a woman. It's harder for women in Washington, D.C., who negotiated the halls of power for 50 years. Or 40 years. A. Hey, she, the lady knows how to, it's hard to negotiate. You go try to negotiate through the power center of the world, which is Washington, D.C. That's hard. So I pick and choose from her. Abraham Lincoln, you know, Abraham Lincoln did a lot of amazing things. You pick and choose there. Some people say, oh, Ty, I don't like everything you do. Well, good. I don't like everything I do either. I pick and choose what I like about myself, too. So when you begin to see that this system is stacked and gets you the same outcome that people had there then you start taking matters in your own hand picking and choosing from different people an amalgamation put put this word uh put a line here let me just do this i'll show you so this is it's all the same boom this is the same this is the same this is the same this is the same but something changed, and this didn't exist very much in the 1800s. There was, can you write self-education? There was some level of self-education in 1821. There were books. That's it, and newspapers. There was no radio, no TV, no internet, no YouTube, no Facebook, Instagram Live, no live online courses, no you to me, not no uh, you know um, ability to network LinkedIn, nothing. So self-education was very limited to just books and newspapers. That's the two things they had. But what happened now, and if you take advantage, so this quadrant's not that helpful. This one's not that uh, helpful. I should just say yes. Yes. books. Um, but this new <laughs> quadrant is the quadrant you must be in. And that's what I'm gonna kinda that's end that. with, is just the explanation of this quadrant and how you use it. This quadrant is the amalgamation where you begin to take the best of this, you know? The best of this, the best of this. Books was a great one. And you pull it all in, and you become the receiver of all blessings. So you can receive the blessings from the 1800s. You can receive the blessings from modern times, and you pull them all into this new world. 50% of people lost here, the other 25% stuck here. 25% of you will get here. Somebody said, is Kate Jewish? No. Kate's a, actually adopted, so she's Norwegian. I sent in my DNA yesterday. So. You did? Yeah, oh. so we'll find 23 out in and me. six to eight weeks. She's probably English, Scandinavian. You look, you're probably French too. No. So this quadrant here, what are the elements? Number one, right, mentors. Mentors are the shortcut. And by the way, mentors actually existed. That was the best of the 1800s. They had something called apprenticeships. People used to become an apprentice. 
so I became an apprentice at age 19 to Joel Salatin for about almost two years, a little under two years. And then I, I continued that model uh, with a guy named Mike Stainback in finance and work with G Capital and stuff like that. And that became um, a stepping stone, a massive one. So mentors put here, apprentice. Ty, does your mom watch these live videos? Hmm, probably once in a while. Someone says you look Italian. That's because Kate has so much self tanner on right now. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't Italian. She's a whitey. She got. I'm not that one. Yes, you have freckles. The second you have freckles, no. you are white. I don't have freckles. Even though I, I am 60% white, I don't know what happened. I look more like my dad. Um, <laughs> Leo the Lioness said, I'd love to debate with you guys. You're talking about me or the other people on here? So, apprenticeships, mentorships, internships, but internships is another good one. Get your feet wet, learning from somebody else. So much better to start your own business. Mentorships, internships, apprenticeships. I had a buddy, my friend Jeremy, he, he came to me a few years ago. We were high, we were high school um, friends. And we lost touch. He lives in Virginia. I live here in California. And, and he, he just out of the blue Facebook me, sent me a little message and said, Yo, Ty, I want to start. He was working as a nuclear submarine engineer. And he's like, I'm burned out. I want to get in the brewery business. I want to launch my own beer. And what should I do? Because he had a wife and kids. He goes, I can't just quit my job. I said, dude, do like an internship, apprenticeship. Find a local brewery. Go work once a month there, once a week there for free. Now you're learning from them, and then once you got enough experience, go launch the thing on your own. And he did, and now he's had his own uh, successful brewery for like, I don't know, three, four years. Um, someone said, how are you 60% white? Well, he said, not 50-50. You do know that if you have a parent that's mixed and another parent that's mixed, that you won't be 50-50 of anything, right? So. That person ain't so good at math that asked that. So if like my, if your dad is white and Spanish and your mom's pure white, then you're gonna be 75% white and 25% Spanish. That's how the game goes. It cuts in half. So uh, yeah, another little thing. You guys gotta learn a little bit of math. You gotta have a working knowledge of math to make money. Math is the language of money, okay? You go to China, you better know Chinese. All right. I think we're about done. So I, I just want to end with this thing. Find a mentor. If you don't have a mentor, people ask me all the time to be a mentor. I always say no for the last, since 2013. I've had some special consulting that I do, but I, in general, I don't do personal mentoring. I decided last Friday I was going to do it, and I created a test group. I said, you got one week to apply. That application closes tomorrow Friday at midnight so if you're remotely interested in this you have to go to tylopez.com slash apply by tomorrow midnight fill out the application go through the steps watch the video and then I'll spend the next 12 weeks personally mentoring you not on, it won't be the stuff you're hearing on live it'll be a step-by-step -step formula plan more specific than this you know this I got a wide audience that asked me a million questions we'll be talking about 12 step curriculum. Where is my piece of paper I had yesterday? I don't know where it is, but we'll be going through 12 each week. We'll talk every Tuesday, 4 p.m. California time, live. I'll be you in the test group, anyone in the test group. I'll be answering questions um, live. I'll be giving you an assignment that you then spend 15 minutes a day. You got to be willing to spend five days a week on this. One day a week, it'll take an hour and a half. The other days a week, it'll take 15 minutes a day. So it's not, you can still have another job. If you're busy, you can still make time for this. It's 15 minutes a day for 12 weeks. I'm gonna change people's life. I've already been, to, you guys already missed the first call was two days ago, Tuesday, okay? So let me, as I'm leaving here, we're gonna give one more thing away. Let's give away, let's give away this iPad. Let's give away the iPad. But before we do, I wanna just congratulate because I've had this link up. I wanna congratulate the people who actually took action. Jay Leha, 
in Texas, congratulations. Robert Dinegar, congratulations in Colorado. Rourke Moody sent a picture in. Where's Rourke from? Illinois. Damn, we're getting a ton of Illinois people. All right. Congratulations, Motion Ahmed from Indiana. Thien Tron from Georgia. I don't know if you're from Atlanta. Congratulations. Louis Huey. Wow, your name rhymes. Louis Huey from Ontario. I guess you're from Canada. Congratulations. We got people from all around the world. Georgina Whalen, Missouri. Eduardo Olacon, Olarcon, California. Rafael Polanco, Massachusetts. We're just talking about you. Candace Watson, Atlanta, Georgia. Anthony, how do you pronounce that? Ciarfini, Ciarfani from Alberta, Canada. Congratulations. So, Jennifer Smith from Alabama. So those of you getting in the text group at tylopez.com slash apply, I wanna just say, in a world of people who have big dreams, but it's all talk, you know, it's all talk. It's all talk for most people. All right, <laughs> somebody's mad. I like when people fight with each other. Little advice, I know some of you are standing up for me or attacking other stupid people. Never get in a battle of the wits with a moron. They will pull you down to their level, boy. All right. Uh, <laughs> somebody said, dude, it's mentoring, not mutual funds. I know. People are, people are, hey, this is why I love comments. It reminds me how few people will ever compete with you if you got your head screwed on straight. For everybody here who has your head screwed on straight. Yeah, we gotta figure out how to get YouTube not somehow. Oh, there, just go lower. For all of you with your head screwed on straight, it's gonna be an easy game for you if you take it step by step. You don't go too fast. You don't jump and leap because most of your competitors are gonna be what? Proud, first of all, proud. They're gonna be like, no one tells me my life can improve. My life's perfect. You ever met someone like that? Ain't nothing perfect about their life, but they're gonna tell you how they're proud they are of themselves. How are you gonna be proud of yourself? Like, is the world so weak now that we gotta congratulate someone who comes to the gym on the first day and say, oh, you're so strong. No, you're not. No, you're not. Finish the damn, finish the damn boot camp that you go to at the gym. For all of you who sign up to the damn gym on January 1st, the average person by the time it's uh, January 31st is no longer going to the gym. For the love of God, go to the gym if you sign up for it. Don't be that person, really. If you decide to go on a diet and you're like, for six weeks I'm not gonna eat carbs, just do it. It ain't that big of a deal. People used to starve to death before. No one in this world in any first world or even second world country is starving to death. No, best thing, one of my trainers said, best thing most people could do would be starve themselves at least once a year to trim off all the fat. It's okay, you ain't gonna die. I mean, you could ask a doctor how to do it. Calorie deficit ain't gonna hurt anybody. And as long as you do it smart, you know. And so for all of you, the reason I congratulate the people getting in, I'm not congratulating you too much. I'm not saying to you, oh, now you made it. You didn't make it, you gotta finish the 12 week program that I have. And it's one thing to start, it's another thing to finish. Boy, we live in a world, a lot of people jump off the starting line, all excited when that, that gun goes off, pow, they're running. And then, you know, five feet into it, they're like, whoop, I pulled a muscle in my leg. You know, that's, that's you gotta finish. So get in the habit of finishing things. Now when I set a goal for myself, even if I realize it's kind of a stupid goal, if it's within reason, I'll just finish it just to say I did. I didn't have, I decided I wouldn't eat candy for like, because that's my weakness. I was like, I'm not going to eat candy for like a month or something. I didn't eat any candy for a month. 
Why? Why a month? Why not three weeks? Why not five weeks? People are like, oh, that's so arbitrary. No shit. All of life is arbitrary. What's the whole point of anything in life? What's the point of having kids? You're going to die. Your kids are going to die. In 100 years, nobody's going to remember you and your grandkids. But you still just pick an arbitrary goal in life. You know? Make a goal in life. Just make one up. People go, Ty, what's the purpose of life? Invention. Invent your damn life. There is no real purpose in life. You can be nihilistic. You can be all... Some people think they're so smart because they're like, oh, they think they saw the Matrix one time. So they think they're some massive philosopher. Oh, no, nihilistic. Oh, nothing matters. No shit. We already know that. But some people are smarter than you and they already move one chest, move beyond. Nothing has a purpose unless you create a purpose. There is no purpose. Some people say, oh, you know, my, my mom got cancer, you know... What was God mad? What was the there was no purpose? Cancer is another organism that wanted to survive, and it, you know, can't actually cancer. That's not what cancer is. Cancer is basically overgrowth. Something went wrong in the DNA. Something happened. Something replicated and kept replicating too fast. There's no purpose like that. It's not like God or, you know, you did something wrong and you get cancer. So what you do, you just invent a purpose for your cancer. Some people write a book about it. Some people read. George Carl is a friend of mine who was a basketball coach for the Denver Nuggets. And, uh, you know, he created a charity. He just invented it. He got throat cancer twice. And he just said, he didn't go around going, oh, what's the purpose? You know, I think so for each of you that are just searching for your purpose, just make one up. Try to pick one that's somewhat reasonable. People say, oh, Ty, why are you still doing stuff when you've already made enough money you don't have to do it? Well, what do you want me to do? Go play golf every weekend? Live a boring life? Man, I'm all about adventure. Some of you have a very low threshold for what you're trying to get out of this life, and that's fine. I respect it. In a hundred years, nobody's going to remember me. Nobody's going to remember you. In a thousand years, no one will remember our kids. Or How many people can you name from a thousand years ago? Let's just do a test. Mel, who lived? I'll just pick an exact number. This is I'm going to mess with your guys' brains. Don't use Google. I'm going to ask you this question. One thousand years ago was what year? Roughly. What century? A thousand years ago. First century? You know, a thousand years ago, we lived. What year is it? 2017. So a thousand years ago was a thousand seventeen. Ten seventeen. Name three big people who lived in the 11th century. Just name somebody. Jesus Christ? No. In the 11th century? Nope. King George? Nope. I don't think so. Genghis Khan? Mm, I don't think he was in the 1100s. Somebody put Congress Khan. Kim Kardashian's ass, somebody said. So the point is, you can't remember people from a thousand years ago at all. Everybody's gotta Google it. Let's do 500 years ago. Who can you name that was alive in 1517? Name five people. Five people. 1517. Leonardo DiCaprio, you mean Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> this is, hey, you you a product of the L.A. school system, aren't you? This dude said Leonardo DiCaprio. Famous Chinese monks. You can't just make up a bullshit general answer to try to get the, the famous people. That's not a good answer. Christopher Columbia? Uh, is, is he related to Christopher Columbus? Christopher Columbia? <laughs> Let's see. Somebody said the peanut butter inventor. No, you're talking about... um. What was the guy who invented peanut butter? George Washington Carver. Carver. That wasn't in the 1500s. <laughs> Somebody said the guy from Rome. Somebody said Constantinople. That's a city. So that's very interesting. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, Thomas Edison. Nope. People cannot do this. Some people are joking, but the funny thing is half these people are serious. Somebody said Shakespeare. Yeah, I think Shakespeare was theorized. No one even knows if Shakespeare was a real person, but um yes shakespeare some cortez was cortez in the 15 van gogh van gogh was in the 1500s i think van gogh was the 1800s someone said the napoleon 
<laughs> Little Pump, Logan Paul, somebody's. <laughs> yeah, he looks good for his age if he was born in the 1500s. Alexander the Great, nope. Alexander the Great was before the 1500s, I think. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Uh, somebody said, help a homie out. I'd like to have that t-shirt, Ty. What brand is this, Kate? I could teletransport it through Instagram good Live. Life. It's good life brand. Socrates, nope. King Tut, nope. Martin Luther, yes, Martin Luther was. Not Martin Luther King Jr., but Martin Luther. Somebody said, England is my city. Prince, you mean Machiavelli? Floyd Mayweather. <laughs> All right, I'm going to head out. This is funny. I like to end with a little, you know, uh, lighthearted. Uh... Oh, yeah, let's give away this iPad. All right, let's go. Oh, that's a MacBook. Oh, damn, you guys got lucky. This is a laptop. So here's what we're going to do. Turn that way, Kate, so that you can't see. And I'm just going to move my hand between the four different live, okay. and you tell me when to stop, and then we'll pick a winner from one of those. Okay. Oh, tell me when. Ready? One, two, three. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. You messed up. Just go one, two, three, go. Okay. Don't stop. One, two, three, stop. Instagram. Okay. So everybody, I'm going to give you guys a second to move. If you're not following me on Instagram, we got this. Let's see, which one is this? We got a 12-inch notebook with retina display, 1.1 gigahertz dual core Intel, 256 onboard flash storage, 8 gigs of onboard RAM. You know this thing's more powerful than the first rocket that took man to the moon. All right. So here we go. What up, Instagram? Who wants? I'm going to, I'm going to, what question should I ask? I'm going to ask a question. <clears throat> you guys going to be ready to film this? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna pick something. I'm gonna double check um, my number before I say it. I'm gonna show you guys the answer. Um, no, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. This gonna be gonna be a little tricky. Somebody gonna get it. Okay. Let's see. Don't say anything, Kate. Thank you. Okay. Here we go. Okay. This is what I'm... Okay. I'm going to test. For this... Hold this... Hold this up right here. You get exactly... Two different answers can win. Can you look here with me? So it's going to be either that or that. Okay. Name a famous figure from the from the 1400s who was a writer or a famous king who lived in the 1400s. So it's that or that. I'm watching Instagram. Dun, 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 dun. And sorry, this is from the 1300s. I put the wrong, 14th century, my bad. The 14th century, which was the 1300s. A famous writer from the 1300s. So that's not Shakespeare. Or a famous king. There you go. D bread in 13. Congratulations. He said Chaucer. So, for those of you who are uh, on top of your game, you ever heard of Canterbury Tales? Did Chaucer do um, King Arthur wasn't Chaucer, was he? That I do not know. I should know that. And then it was King Henry the 4th. I would have also done. So, for those of you some of you are going to be badass. Let me read. As I'm closing here, you got until tomorrow, Friday. If you want me to personally mentor you for the next 12 weeks in my small test group, you got to get in the test group. It closes exactly tomorrow, Friday, midnight. You won't be able to apply to get in. Who, who's getting in right now? Who's getting in right now? Rourke Moody. Oh, no. Rourke. This was. Oops, I forgot to scroll up. 
Carol Lee Sing Lau. Congratulations, Carol. Welcome. Next 12 weeks, my goal is to change your life. Ding Ding. Interesting name. Okay. Kate Rothaker. Congrat. Oh, no. She's in the 67 steps. Wrong product. I get an alert every time someone gets into one of my, and I got different programs, but Chris De La Cruz. Congratulations. Connecticut. Steven Macias. Congratulations. Oh, no. That's from my social media one. My bad. Dennis Juanf. Outside of the U.S. We somehow couldn't track your IP address, so. Not that we track you, but we try to figure out what country you're from. We don't track you at your house. Heather Hamilton, congratulations. There's a picture of her, looks like with her boyfriend. Heather, congrats. She lives in Maine. I've been there once. All right, Kevin Rios. That's the wrong program. Melanie Payne, congratulations. Jay Leha, Leha from Texas. Let's see who's getting in right now. I'm going to refresh till we get some. Oh, here. Ryan Jorgensen. Congratulations. Looks like you're from. There we go. There's Ryan. Looks like he's about 25. I already said Carol Lee. Let's see who's going to be the next one in. Any last questions for me? Last question. Bring in the pain. <laughs> How much cash is on that table? What do you think about flipping cars? Oh, by the way, this is not real cash. I ain't using real cash. You start flashing real cash, you're gonna get murdered. So, for anybody thinking of trying to rob me, uh, I'll give you this cash. It's worth about $5. This is prop cash. For all you people, don't be damn putting real cash all over your house. Shit, I'm not stupid. You put your money in a bank, man, or put it in a vault. Put it somewhere. Your house burns down. You got this much cash, you know. You can be a sad ass person, but yeah. So there you go. But I got that much cash, just not in my house. I got more than that. That's only a hundred grand. Come on, people. I showed you business that I got making a hundred grand in an hour before. Way more. They want to auction for a grocery trip to go hang out with Kate. Nah, I'm not going to do that. Why would I do that? Oh, oh, let me keep checking. See who next person in. Here we go. Ryan Buczynski. There he is. I'm not sure he got a pick from Pennsylvania. Ryan's in. I'm going to stay on here till one more person gets in. It's awesome. Ryan Jorgensen and Ryan Buczynski both got in in the last two minutes. Who else get in the test group? Kate for charity. <laughs> uh, I want to get in. TyLopez.com slash apply. Someone wants to hang out with Big Rome. Ty, how can you mentor so many people personally? I'm not mentoring every person. You know, we got 100,000 people watching this. That's why I created a small test group. I know how to do a small test group. It's better to actually be in a test group. I'm not gonna fly out to where you are personally, but I'm gonna personally mentor you in the sense that it's a live call. We do every Tuesday for 12 weeks. I'm there, you got a question. I answer almost everybody's questions unless somebody's asking. Ooh, sometimes people ask 38 questions. I tell everybody to get one question a week, I'll answer it personally on your personal situation on that live call. But the goal is not to ask me questions. Let me train you on what other people train me. That's what you want. Uh, thank you so much for all that you do. Ty, you got a great heart. Play some salsa on the piano. I don't know. Salsa music is hard to play, man. All right. Who else is in? Ulysses Montano. Oh, no. That's my 67 steps program. Sorry. I told you I always got different programs. Um, what's the success rate of your groups? You know, uh, do, I'll put it this way. It's hard to know because we I do online programs. So there's people that you never talk to again. They buy the programs, they download them, they listen to them on their own. But we get so many testimonials, okay, that I have people that's their full-time job in my office. Because I used to just like, at first I was like, I wonder if I'll be able to help a lot of people. And then so many people 
start writing in, I was like, oh, I'll collect it myself. And then it got too big. And so uh, it's insane how many, um, I mean, when you need to hire a full-time person, that's pretty much full-time what they do to just manage the people with success stories, flying people in. So you, like I said, I wish I could reach every person who ever bought an online program and downloaded the 67 steps has 150,000 people went through it. The best thing I can tell you is that refund rates, because I give, ref, you know, college doesn't give you a refund. I got refund rates that are like 25% of what normal refund rates are for similar products for other companies. So that's the best way. People vote with their dollar, man. They vote with their dollar. So in the sense that if you launch a business and that business is getting an above average refund rate you know you have a problem either in the product in the delivery you could be your marketing could be misleading people into thinking they're getting something they're not so you got to walk that fine line of understanding that there's a time um, that that you must balance all those elements you know is there what's my take on religion oh here we go Mitchell Kaskela Congratulations, Michigan. Welcome to the group. Been following me since January 4th. And now you got it. It's interesting. There's a long life cycle for all of you building businesses. Uh, the question was, what I think of religion? Well, you know what I tell a lot of people? A lot of stuff is common sense. So a lot of the stuff people ask about religion, it's like common sense. So for example, where did I have that page? A lot of people's beliefs hasn't changed from the 1800s, even though we know the world's different. My friend's dad was a NASA scientist, and he said throughout history, people have always called God, blamed God for anything they don't understand. So like when the bubonic plague happened in, uh, I think it was the 1200s and 1300s, people said God was mad. They didn't understand that it was an infection from rats and that the, as boats were sailing around the world, the rats lived on the boats and they would come out and they would bite people. The fleas would jump on the on the, the rats, bite them, and then the fleas would jump on people because it wasn't sanitary. Now we know, now when you see some a, a kid die of bubonic, they don't really have the plague. I, I think it's very rare. But when you see somebody with a disease, whether it's bubonic plague or this, no one nowadays that has their head screwed on goes, Oh, this is the devil or this is God. I mean, even if you're religious watching this, you don't think that when kids die that it's because God was mad at their family or something, right? They used to think that. Um, so I think there's a I think what you got to do with religion is you got to look at the parts that make sense. And we know a lot of religion, even if you believe in Jesus or Muhammad, there's a lot of man-made stuff. And some of that stuff doesn't apply anymore, you know? And not everybody might not like me saying that, but come on, man. You know, it's, we know the world's not flat. Although some people, <laughs> Kyrie Irving, didn't he come out and say the world's fat? <laughs> uh, so, you know, like I said, keep your head screwed on straight. You figure out a lot of this stuff. Oh, here. Damn, I forgot to refresh. There's, let me just say this. As I'm going to get off now. Enrique Ortiz, congratulations from California. Just got in my test group. Jason Vargi, congratulations. Jerron Moore, congratulations from Texas. So I'll stop there. I don't want to keep reading names. But those of you who took action, you'll see. You'll see. Have a little faith. Have a little faith, man. Okay? So I'm going to start pulling these down here. Thank you for watching, everybody. I'm going to go off here.